Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Pinstack Smashing. I am your host and favorite YouTube lockpicker, Master Yale Quickset. Thank you for joining me. Tonight's episode will be somewhat of a history lesson into the beginnings of modern-day information security. So enter our time machine as we set out and journey into the past to hack one of the largest, most mysterious, and often dangerous networks in all of history. The Bell System. Often referred to as Ma Bell, it was a system of companies led by the Bell Telephone Company and later by AT&T, which was the biggest corporation in American history, by the way. The Bell system provided telephone services to much of the United States and Canada for over 100 years, starting in 1877. It was determined to be a monopoly and broken up, finally in 1983, into smaller independent companies called Baby Bells. Obviously, my favorite part of the story of the Bell system was in November of 1960 when the technical details were disclosed by the Bell System Technical Journal in an article entitled Signaling Systems for Control of Telephone Switching. These technical details in this article identified the specific single frequency and multi-frequency tones used to start and end a call, open and close connections to telephone switches, and transmit the called number on long-distance connections. What's worse is that they also published the fact that you can play these tones through the mouthpiece of the phone to control the switches remotely. This was called in-band signaling. As the story goes, these details were not overlooked by a young engineer student named Ralph Barclay in Ephrata, Washington, who designed boxes which generated these tones and single-handedly would control much of the bell system for fun and personal research. This 19-year-old information security pioneer's boxes later became known as Blue Boxes, and the first hackers of the Bell system became known as Phone Freaks. Here is a look at some modern-day Blue Boxes. I made these to be used with the collector's network of antique phone switches, or with Project MF, which uses the Linux asterisk PBX system and simulates old phone switches from the Bell system. So what does all of this have to do with picking locks? Well, my friends, this evening I have a very special lock for you. A Bell System Wilson Bohannon lock. This lock was most likely used to secure some sort of information, device, or access to some part of the Bell System itself. So, according to documentation, this is an extruded brass padlock. It is made from polished brass, it is a 5-pin tumbler, and it also has a brass shackle, which actually makes this a Model 620A. There we go, big click on 3, click on 2, Mighty click on one, click on four, click on one, click on three, two, good click on two. Okay, so what I'm doing here is called speed bumping. I am applying pressure to the tension wrench, which is applying torque pressure to the tumbler. And in doing so, you jam the pins, or bind the pins. I look for one that's jutting upwards, and I simply just press down on it until I hear a click. And when doing so, what usually happens is that the tumbler will turn ever so slightly and bind another pin. And then I just look for another pin, and repeat this process until I completely get all of the pins at the shear line, thus popping open the lock. And look at that. We have picked the lock backwards. As you can see, the lock is not opening. Oh, the lock did open. Now that I have this open, finally, I'm going to try to spray in here and see if I can't loosen some of these. 
components up also. Wow, look at all of the black soot coming out of here. Look at my finger. I did not expect the lock to actually throw up on me. <laughs> Four, let's see if I can get the bolt to unstick. Ooh. Okay, I'm using the thickest pry bar I have. It's about a 50 thousandths of an inch pry bar and standard uh, wave rake from Peterson. Let's get this open quickly. There we go. Pretty sure it has regular, uh, I'm sorry, I always say regular pins. I believe they're just standard pins. So the weirdest part about this is that it opens up counterclockwise, which makes things a little bit strange. I'm going to be using a rubber handled standard GSP hook here. There we go. Pin four feels like it's oversetting. It may honestly just be because of how dirty this lock is. There we go. I'm going to use another tool here to actually open it, two tools at once. This thing is very, very stubborn. We were able to successfully pick the lock and rake the lock. And again, this is a Model 620 Wilson Bohannon that was made for the Bell system. Well, friends, I hope that you enjoyed this tiny history lesson and this educational episode of Pinstack Smashing. We got to single pin pick a lock that was used by the bell system, and we also raked the lock, which is a Wilson Bohannon Model 620. So once again, we're able to defeat the security of Ma Bell. I hope that you have a good evening, friends, and good night. Summer of 1961. What a year. People were doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Me? Well, I just finished up my freshman year and I was home from college. I was working at a TV repair shop and spent my free time exploring the phone system using a device that I made. I was also using my buddy's phone line in a photography studio that he owned in Ephrata, Washington. See, last year, November to be exact, Bell Labs must have run out of materials for their articles for the Bell System Technical Journal because they decided to publish what seemed like a manual for their telephone switching network. They published all of the frequencies required and the fact that they could be transmitted using in-band signaling, which is a fancy way of saying through the mouthpiece of the telephone. Well, a lot of people who are involved with security have their brains wired in a particular way that they notice vulnerabilities, sometimes almost right away. They see things for the lack of a better word normal people don't see. They look at something and they immediately think, well gosh, that's a vulnerability. Whether or not they exploit that vulnerability is up to them. I decided to, but privately and for fun. I built a box that plays the multi-frequency tones. 
As I said, I spent a lot of time in the back of my friend's photography studio using my box with his phone line. I mean, I had to. My phone lines were not in Bell territory, and my little blue box didn't work from home in Soap Lake, which was about six miles north of Ephraim. So my friend cut me a deal, and he let me use his phone line whenever I wanted to if I left the blue box in the back of his photography studio so that he could use it to make calls whenever he wanted to. Well, just before I was getting ready to go back to college for my sophomore year, I was busted by the feds and Ma Bell for making calls without paying for them using my little blue box. What the feds call wire fraud, I call research, or good old explore. So after hours of explaining to the feds that I was not a bookmaker for horses and that the photography studio actually did take photos of horses and my friend owned a horse and was kind of obsessed with them, the judge realized this and finally let me off with an anecdote of whenever he was young. He claimed that when he was young, he and his friends would freeze ice into a mold of a nickel to rip off the payphones to make long-distance calls with actions that were just as curious as mine. Now, being an engineering student probably helped out in my favor. After, Bell Labs took my MF box, the blue box, but they left me my 2600 box. What sucks is that it only works in a few switches that I know of, but it still works. Ma Bell's phasing out the single frequency control switches for multi frequency control switches. So, here I'd like to show it off and test it out. So, that, like I said, this. Hey, what's this thing? They locked it up so I can't use it. What am I supposed to do? I have an idea. Let's use this wave rake from Peterson, see if we can't get this open. Where were we? 